and welcome to the Scale Model Geek. This week's build is Doctor Strange. This figure is actually pretty good. It's got some really nice detail in the fabric. My only criticism, he looks a bit cartoony. Still a nice print that I did in my Anycubic printer. And the cape, this time around, fitted perfectly compared to the last two attempts I had with capes. I've already glued that off camera. Some really nice detail in the hands. And this shield, uh, I uh, printed in a clear piece. I'm gonna try and do something interesting with that. First thing you need to do is make the parts uh, come together. Just gluing in this locating pin, I probably should have test fitted with that locating pin in there, because it doesn't fit. And I already put super glue in there, so what I need to do is actually break it apart and start again. And after a quick test fit, it fits nicely, so I'm ready to commit myself with some super glue. And straight away you can see the difference there. The arms fitted really nicely. Minor, minor gap in there, but that would fill up with paint. Now what I decided to do with this particular construction was, I was gonna do the whole thing in uh, uh, with a paintbrush, rather than doing any airbrushing. The only type of spraying I'll do is for the undercoat. Bit of heavy sanding, get that joint out. Now I started off with uh, 180 grit, then moved on to 400 to finish it off. And come up quite well. You can see the joint is really nice and pretty much disappeared there. Now with the undercoat done, uh, which I sprayed off camera. I did find some issues with the cape and some areas that needed to um, need to be re-puttied up. Now once the actual uh, spray job is all even, you can actually see some of the flaws. Now while that's put aside, I'm just using this dark Prussian blue for the base color of his uh, tunic. And brushing uh, with a brush, it did take a couple coats to get a nice even finish to it. And now I'm gonna do some dry brushing with the dark blue and just the raised areas around his tunic. It's starting to pop now, you can see a bit of detail happening. And the black, I'm gonna use for his belt and medallion. And this area I'm painting now, I have no idea what that bit's called. And using some of this old gold for the medallion, I'm just dry brushing that on the, onto the medallion section. And NATO brown for the belt. I'm just gonna dry brush that lightly across his belt. A little bit heavy on that buckle. And I'm heading with the gun metal, the gun metal to use on his actual metal bits of the belt. I kind of thought it needed a bit more highlighting, so I've gone to this light metal from Ammo and just did a bit of dry brushing on the edges.
That made a great difference. Now the earth, I'm gonna use on that a dangly bit. I just leave a, a comment if you know what that's called. And some of that uh, earth also along the edges of the belt to show a bit of wear. And back to the black for his boots. Now I'm going to use the dark Prussian blue once again, but this time I'm going to use it as a heavy dry brush along his boots. And just using this dark blue as a light brush over his boots. Onto the red for his cape. Now if I'd used an airbrush for this, this would have been a lot more even and a lot quicker to do. In the end I had to do a couple coats in there just to get it nice and even. And this collar really turned out to be a, a headache for me because he actually has two collars. He's got this main collar uh, for his cape and he's got a collar on his tunic. So when he came to actually painting his uh, head, the flesh tones, it was a real pain to get in there. I'm using this brown sand for his base co uh, color for his flesh tones. You can see oh, that was just terrible to work around that collar. You can see on the blue collar there, I actually got a bit of uh, flesh color on there or dark sand onto it. So I, obviously I had to touch it up a bit later on. I'm using the white gray for his eyes. Don't panic, they do look a bit uh, big, but this is a technique I picked up years and years ago. And basically what you do is you create the uh, white areas, then you create black lines for his pupils, and then uh, going back to the flesh tones, or the dark sand in this case, you kind of shape it. And you can see, you know, I'm getting that intense look to him because he's in the middle of conjuring a, um, a spell. Then the black once again for his hair. Now the burnt red for some of the shadow areas, which is underneath his um, eyelids, and also in, uh, just at the edges of his eyes, which I'll blend a little bit later. Under his nose for some shadows, and down the sides of his nose and eyes. And with the washed down uh, version of the burnt red, I created some uh, some shadowing in the cheeks. Now I'm using this Panzer Grey to dry brush his hair. And not forgetting his goatee. Back onto the white grey, and he's got these side, they're not really sideburns, but sections of his hair that have gone grey on both sides. It was time to create a base for him. Now originally I was gonna use this four by six picture frame and have a foam core in the middle of it. But when I kind of put him on top of the frame, the frame just looked way too big for essentially just a figure. So I had a bit of a look around in my stash and I found this lid and it turned out to be the perfect size. So putting him on there, it looked really, really good. But I do need to add a bit of a terrain to it 
And rather than show you uh, this uh, section, I thought I'll use some magic. And all I did was use uh, railway train ballast there and a PVA glue, watered down PVA glue, and just uh, st stuck it onto that base. Of course, I painted the base black first. Now, just with a lighter shade of red, I'm dry brushing the cape now. It's looking great. It's really coming along nicely. I will fix those eyes up. They're a bit starey. Now to uh, actually glue them to the base, I'm just using this two-part Aerodite. To me, a paint pot that I've got behind him is just to prop him up while he dries into place. Now here comes the shield. So I had this idea, what I might do is actually, after printing it out in clear, I thought I might try actually just painting it. And it looked terrible. Didn't, didn't feel like a glow at all. So I came up with the idea, what I might do is actually uh, print it on a decal sheet and then stick the decal onto the, um, the shield, the clear shield. As a backup plan, I just had a, a, a flat shield because the actual shield provided with the kit has a bit of a curve to it. And I wasn't 100% confident with how the shield was actually going to conform to that curve. Thirty seconds in some warm water. I use this uh, Mr. Mark softener. I'm just using that to soften up the actual decal, so it actually, you know, conforms to that shield. This took a bit of playing around, constant uh, dabbing it with the Mark softener or Mark softer. And I had a slightly different design as well that I downloaded off the web. And onto the second test shield. And this is the clear sheet that I kind of cut to size. And in this particular case, what I did, you can see on the left, I've got a second one. I actually did a printed a mirror version of it, and I stuck one decal on one side, then the other one on the back side of it. And a bit of um, thinking which one I'd, uh, to use. I kind of decided I'll go with the left one. It looked a lot more realistic. Now this is just some sprue I got from a previous build. Super glued it right in the middle. Some more super glue in his hand. And a shield into place. And we're done. So I think it's time to see the hero shots. <laughs> 